Hello, beautiful light. Hello. Hello and welcome to this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. This is your girl, Abigail Mensabonsu. I am the founder of the Moon Goddess Publishing and the Moon Goddess Academy. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've always been here, thank you so much for supporting me, for supporting the messages, the, my work, for sharing my work, for commenting. I love reading the comments in the video, so keep them coming. But thank you for being here. If you haven't already yet, make sure you go ahead and click on that subscribe button and also the like button. Um, and that way, every time I post a video, you'll be one of the first ones to know. This week, <laughs> shall we begin with this week? So I wanted to start with um, a cool thing. So one thing that i've noticed it was like starting is it like last year probably december i got introduced to this amazing art i don't it's not even an art for me it's like psychology right and it's called neurographica or neurographic art and the moment i saw it like it felt like a massage for my brain. Like I looked at the image as like, this looks like neurons of the brain. And if you if you know me, you know, my background is in psychology and pre-med. And one of my favorite part of the body is the human mind. Um, it was just why, you know, one of my majors was psychology. I absolutely love the human mind. It just, the brain and, oh, the first time that I saw a brain, like how I just fell in love. It just like, oh my God. This is what is sitting in here. Absolutely. So, and it makes sense, right? <laughs> I love how the, the, the mind operates, right? Not just the, the physical mind, but also the higher mind. I love how it operates. I love how it comes up with solutions. I love how it, you know, tries to protect us, <laughs> right? The mind is beautiful. If it's a beautiful flower, if we understand its real purpose, right? We've usually associated the mind with, you know, the intellect, which, which is like, we tend to see this more masculine, maybe even evil or, you know, like where the ego, right? We tend to cut it down. But that's because in our history, you know, humanity kind of put the mind only on a pedestal and so you you know you have to have the best grades um you have to have the best job you have to you know it was all intellect like what how intelligent are you right it's all about the mind how you think right it was very masculine and the mind the brain does not operate well without its partner its soul mate the heart. So when that happened, there was a huge imbalance, right? So how can we really understand the highest potential of the mind when it's missing a huge part of itself, which is the heart? And the heart is, by the way, the second um, favorite organ of the human body for me. I love the heart too. It is incredible what it does in the body. Like I am I'm just in love with the human body. Like, absolutely. It's, it's a miracle in itself. Don't get me started on that, right? <laughs> so if you didn't know that about me, now you know. My background was in psychology and pre-med. Um, and actually Chinese medicine as well. I got my master's in Chinese medicine. And I got to dive in deep into the wisdom of the human body. So not only do I understand humanity on a spiritual level, but I also understand how the human being operates on the physical level. And I love that bridge, bridging those two, because that's how I'm able to see the complete picture, right? And even that I'm still learning new things. So it's amazing. So anyway, going back to the neurographica, I saw, um, I was introduced to it last year. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's like drawing the brain neurons, right? I wanted to do it. So I started doing it. I started just, you know, taking classes. And, you know, now I'm like, I'm doing the timeline class and I'm also doing the basic certification class. And I'm just loving it because 
it is so healing. What I love about it is that you start out with a catharsis, which is like the problem, right? What is it that you're trying to solve? And it might look like a scribble. You, you are allowed to make like a huge mess on the paper. And then from there, you bring in the ideas through these neurographic lines that look like the, the neurons in the brain, right? And then you, you kind of smooth over the sharp edges. Like as you're doing it, you can feel the shift within your mind. It is the most enlightening physical thing I've ever done. Like, I just love it. I love using tools that allows you to anchor the spirit, right? Anything that, any physical thing that allows you to anchor spirit is just delicious, right? So we did this um, 2022 timeline. And after I was done with mine, I was like, whoo. So here's why I'm going to share mine with you guys. Can you see it? So you can see me right there. <laughs> and all the round, the bubbles. And you can kind of see when I talk about the neurographic lines. And if you're interested in what I'm talking about, just send me a message and I will connect you with the right um, people to learn more about this beautiful, beautiful technique and tool, right? So these lines here that is connecting all of my dreams and wishes and intentions are what I'm calling the neurographic lines, right? Um, but when I when I was done with that, I was like, wow, it looks like I'm I'm in a cave, right? Or the cave is opening out, like opening up, maybe even cracking away. But look at all of the, those dreams. I was like, wow, they're all coming from my solar plexus and maybe even a little in my, it's like roots and solar plexus right here. And they're all emanating out from them and spreading outward. Beautiful. I just love this. It's like the more I look at it, the more it opens up for me, right? And it, again, it was just, it felt so good to anchor my intentions physically, right? I was talking to my husband about this, where, you know, you tend to meet a lot of spiritual people are more ungrounded, right? If you ask them to explain this, the, you know, the spiritual aspect in a human form, like human language, it's usually hard for them because they're not grounded, they're not rooted, right? And so even your words are not rooted. It's like they feel like they're explaining it, but you're even more confused. And, you know, like it, it sounds like you are hearing the spiritual jargon, right? What, how do you know when someone's grounded, especially, you know, when I'm talking about like sp spiritually, you know, it's when they're speaking about a spiritual concept, you're able to feel it in your body, you're able to experience it in your physical world, and you're able to also understand it on all levels. You just get it. it doesn't matter what big words I use. You just know, you, it's like this, you just get it, right? But that person needs to be grounded. This is why I'm thankful that I'm a Virgo sun and a Capricorn rising because those two keep me grounded. Otherwise, I'll be flying off. <laughs> you know, spirituality is my thing. I get it. Like, that's, that's my jam. I get it. And so without those two anchors, the Virgo and the Capricorn, yeah, <laughs> I would be out of here. So in your life, Oh, this is interesting. In your life, where are you keeping those two separate? Are you more physical and less spiritual? Are you more spiritual and less physical? Is there an imbalance between those two? Or are you working to bring them in harmony, bringing them together? Because we're both. And then going back to the beginning, when I was talking about the mind and the heart, they work together beautifully. They're meant to be working together. And if anything, the heart is supposed to be the one taking the lead because the heart receives what needs to be done, right? What the soul wants to express, what is coming through from the higher level, and then it transmit it to the, to the mind. And the mind has the ability to be like, oh, Okay, I see the picture. This is how we can do it and brings like the pathways. Okay, we, we're going to go this way. And we're going to go that way. And we're going to do this here, right? 
But without that main information there, the mind is just going everywhere, right? Just trying to figure it out without a map. The heart has to map. So how are you keeping those two separated? Your physicality and your spirituality, your mind and your heart. How are you keeping those two separated within your life? It's time to bring them in harmony, bring them in unison. Look in your life, be honest with yourself. Where am I out of balance? Am I more spiritual? Am I more physical? Start with that and then go from there. Okay, well, I'm more spiritual. That means I really need to focus about anchoring my light onto this planet because that's the, that's the whole point of that. You know, it reminds me of star seeds, especially, you know, ground your light into the earth. This is why we're here. Ground that light into the earth because that's how we're able to shift the frequency that we came here to shift. That's how we're able to aid Mama Earth in this transformation and support Mama Earth and all humanity. It's not by staying above, it's by anchoring your light. When I see light, when I see star seeds who are um, balanced and rooted, they look like light pillars coming down from the heavens and going deep into the earth. Ah, better yet, they look like trees <laughs> with deep roots into the earth, with the strong, solid trunk and all the branches reaching into the heavens. Check in with your tree. Imagine yourself as a tree. Where are you? Where do you need more support? Do you need to go into the roots and build more of that root system? Do you need to come up to the branches and extend your branches up? Are your branches kind of like just flopping down, right? I'm not knowing where to go, right? Do they need to extend up and reach into the heavens to receive the sun, the solar light? Or do you need to strengthen your trunk? So that you're able to grow taller. Where do you need support? Be honest with you. Like bring that into your mind's eye. Imagine yourself as a tree. And just take a look. This is a visualization I do all the time. I love you. If you've been following me, you know I love trees. <laughs> They're the greatest teachers on this planet for us. Imagine yourself as a tree. Where do you need support? I want to hear from you. Put that in the comments. So send me a message. And as you're doing that, we're going to go ahead and call in our beautiful guides and guardians, our divine posse, all the beautiful ascended masters of light, the angels, the archangels, our higher selves to come in and to assist each and every one of you. Wherever you need support, I ask that you receive that support on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. If you'd like to receive this, go ahead and say yes. Beautiful. And just imagine that beautiful golden light coming down from the heart of the Divine Father and just pouring into you and also all around you. You see this beautiful golden light expand all around you. Bring your attention to the, the, the roots, your roots. Make sure they're all, they're extending all the way down into the earth, into the center of the earth, where you will find the heart of the Divine Mother. Make sure, like for me, I just got the image of, you know, like the heart of the Divine Mother is this beautiful, brilliant, crystalline ball of light, and your roots kind of just come around it, kind of just, you know, create like this thing around it. Like that's kind of like how I'm seeing it. And it's just like, it might, it might just be like this, right? And you're receiving the mana 
the life force from, from the Divine Mother, which is infinite, which is always being produced. There's no ending to how much love the Divine has for us and wants to give us and wants to pour into us. But make sure you're connected to the source, just like you're connected above, make sure that you're plugged in below. And begin to bring both energies into your heart. And go ahead and call in your higher self into your heart. And from there, see all three energies come together. And it always reminds me of a supernova where it just like explodes out and creates this beautiful crystalline bubble of light all around you, 360 degrees. And expand this bubble of light as big as you can, even beyond what you're comfortable with. Take up space and just breathe into this spaciousness, into this space of connectivity. And receive and any support that you need in balance in your heaven and your earth. Bringing the two together, bringing the heart and the mind together. Merge in your spirituality and your physicality. And from this place of balance, um, what I'm seeing for, for some of you, as you merge heaven and earth, as you merge your physicality and your spirituality, there's like this expansion of light around your tree. It's almost like an aura around your tree emanating out. And each of you have a different color, colors. From this space, go ahead and ask, let's ask, what, what is for our highest good this week? What, what do we need to know this week that will support us? We need to know what which of these messages is for our highest and best one two or three and once you have received your number or numbers taking a deep breath in open your eyes ready to receive your message <laughs> we're going to continue with uh using the inner what is it called? Unshakable Peace um, Oracle Deck, because I really love the energy that is oozing out. And the cards today are just simply beautiful. So let's see here. If you received one, let me find it real quick. There we go. Look how beautiful this card is. So if you received one, here is your message for this week. It says, take responsibility for your life as a creative adventure. Take responsibility for your life as a creative adventure. Here's the message. You don't have to live epically and tackle everything on your bucket list to create a meaningful life. A good life is one that is aligned with your values and integrity. What do you stand for? What matters most to you? When do you feel the most alive and enjoy? I feel like this is my card, by the way. This is your invitation to actively participate in the creation of your beautiful, bold life. Take responsibility for your life as a creative adventure. For through your choices and perceptions, you create your reality. The decisions you make and the choices you align with create your life. The question becomes, what kind of, what kind of life do you really want to live? You've drawn this card because there may be an imbalance in your thoughts. You may... You may feel like a victim to the harassment of life, but this is a reminder that you are in control of your own reactions to all situations. 
You're being called to see where you are still harboring negative, harmful emotions towards yourself or others and release them with love. To be a victim in life, someone who feels life is happening to them is a choice. And when you believe you have been wronged, you have no personal power. To be a victim in life, someone who feels like life is happening to them is a choice. And when you believe you have been wronged, you have no personal power. You're giving away your own control to outside forces. When you are in victim mentality, you blame, shame, and guilt others and yourself. As Paul Selig says, you can't be a victim and master at the same time. Step into a creator consciousness energy rather than a victim focus. Oh, I love this part. Step into a creator consciousness energy rather than a victim focus. The creator in you knows you are infinite. The creator in you knows you are infinite power and trust the greater intelligence of life. Everything you experience, pleasant or not, is part of your conscious co-creation because you participate in it by either resisting, accepting, or allowing it. Take full responsibility for your life as a beautiful, bold adventure and dive into your journey by activating your authentic power. So here's a question for you for this week, your soul question. How can I live with more meaning, integrity, and truth? How can I live with more meaning, integrity, and truth? What thoughts are imbalanced and holding me back? What thoughts are imbalanced and holding me back? Card number one. How beautiful. We're just talking about the mind, right? Thoughts. All right, let's go to two. If you received two, this over here. Yes, the card that you received. These cards are so beautiful. Look at this. And it says, rise above it. It's not yours to carry. You are an empath. This card is speaking to all my beautiful empaths which if you're following me, you are, because I am too. <laughs> I should do like a whole thing about empaths, right? Because that, that soul gift, this superpower usually seen or experienced so negatively, and yet it is such a powerful blessing to have if you understand its purpose, if you understand its invitation to you, right? So here's your message, my beautiful empath if you received card number two. An unforeseen force is working in your life right now, and it is your superpower to feel other people's emotions. Being an empath means you're highly sensitive to the energy of other people, places, animals, and nature. It is a gift to have such a compassionate heart as you are aware of other people's emotions, but it can be confusing if you don't understand this about yourself. You know you are a natural empath if people turn to you for advice and you tend to have a soothing effect on others when you are around when they're around you. As a highly sensitive person, you naturally want to help other people and take away their pain. But this is an important time to stop focusing on others and instead take care of yourself. You've drawn, you've received this card because many of the overwhelming feelings you've been experiencing are not yours. You have been picking up energy from others and transmuting it. As an empath, this is your gift to the world, picking up energies and transmuting it. You help heal by taking on others' pain but it harms you if you don't know how to work with your own energy. Give yourself time to rest without judging yourself. Release this pressure and instead listen to your own body. You can care for others, but you must first care for yourself. 
being an empath is a divine gift. But if you don't know how to balance and ground yourself, it can become a chore. Next time a wave of emotions come over you, ask, is this mine or is this for me to heal? If your inner voice connects with it, you will know it is an it is an unhealed aspect of your journey. But if you don't know how it is connected, it could be picked up energy. Let your higher self respond. You may realize the energy isn't yours and perhaps belongs to someone who just passed or came in contact with you. Most often, the roller coaster of emotions you're experiencing is not yours. As an empath, it is extra important to ground yourself daily, set clear boundaries, and take care of yourself first. When you become more stable and begin to take care of your energies consciously, you will no longer be impacted by the outside world because your inner world will stay strong. Instead of allowing your environment to affect your mood, find the source of stability within you. It is time to rise above the roller coaster drama of the world and seek solace within. This is a powerful, powerful card. And it's given me a great idea. As I was reading this, I got this um, vision of creating like a um, toolkit, a spiritual toolkit for the empath. I'm going to create like these. Um, like activations and techniques that you can use to really um, create that inner fortress and also to fortify your shield. You know, most empaths are, you know, I tell my husband, it's like you're walking around like a, a what, 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 what did I, oh my God, I can't find the word. It's Mercury retrograde, by the way, which I think I'm doing pretty good, <laughs> right? Um, It's like a nerve that has been exposed, an exposed nerve, right? So everything just comes right to you, right? When you haven't tapped into your higher self's technology, which is your, you know, your light body, your angelic wings, and also your, um, your golden dragon body, if you have not connected with your higher self and activated these, then everything, all the emotions going on in the world, whether it's right in your neighborhood or on the other side of the world, you are going to feel that because it is your superpower to transmute this. So I'm going to create something like that this year for my beautiful empaths, because this is something that, you know, for me, I call myself like the elevated empath, because at some point you step into the true power of being compassionate. <laughs> you know, the ascended empath is compassionate. An empath is someone, this is how I can, uh, maybe I've talked about this before, where the empath will put his or her, sh her feet in the other person's shoes and wear it around. So they feel it, they, they, they're living the experience the other person is living, which can be traumatic, right? You're taking it all in. Being compassionate means that you don't put your feet in the shoes. You see the shoes and you, you understand what is going on and you send love or you send the healing or, you know, from where you are, but you don't need to wear the shoes to be able to help the other person. That's how you know you've truly, you truly understand your gift as an empath. You don't need to wear the shoe. Most of your, your life, you've probably worn the shoes of others and taken it all on. I've done that. Absolutely. I did that all the way to probably like age 26. I was born into that right? It became a thing that I love to do, you know, taking people's pain, right? But nobody taught me that, you know, how to transmute it. So it gets stored in my body, which is very harmful, right? So I'm really excited about creating this em empath toolkit. I want someone to hold me up to this as a, a accountability, like make sure you remind me that I'm going to create this. This is coming in very strong and I feel like it's very needed. You know, a lot of empaths at this time are being asked to be elevated, to step into the higher level of um, compassion, which is the next level 
um, up from um, empathic. <laughs> We're all empathic in nature if we choose to step into that. But some of us, um, it is more of a superpower. It's more enhanced, right? So for those of you who really like being an empath is what you're here to do, it's time for you to take it to the next level. And it is a process, right? It is a process. You got to be gentle with yourself. You got to put yourself first. You know, one of the things that I, I do, even up till now, I still do. It's like, I love my alone time because I understand <laughs> what happens in my alone time. I am, you know, healing myself. I am coming back to myself. I am rejuvenating myself and I love it. And a lot of people don't understand that, right? It's like, wait, you don't want to come out? It's like, Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna read my book and listen to music and maybe watch a funny movie and just be with myself. Because as an empath, that's the time that you use to rejuvenate. That's the time that you use to heal and rebalance, right? And reconnect. It's very interesting. So don't let anybody shame you in loving your alone time or finding a time to take care of yourself because for you, it's a non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable. Oh, I need to do this. So I'm going to create a toolkit, okay? You guys look out for it. It has to be done because it is so needed at this time. So that was card number two, speaking to the empath. And, you know, if you're an empath, go ahead and comment below. I want to know, you know, which of you are empaths so I can really send some support your way. Um, your divine team is still doing your work. Remember, what support do you need, right? Your tree is being fortified. So whatever support you need, speak it out. Because your divine team, they're on it. They're absolutely on it. Powerful, powerful message, which gave me a divine assignment, right? <laughs> All right. So here's the question for you this week, beautiful empath, for you to ask yourself, what can I do to ground myself and my energy? How can I detach from the drama? And is this energy, emotion, and feeling even mine? And how can I release it? The other thing that came in as I was reading this, um, as an empath, the work with the peacock. The peacock is one of my power animals. And, you know, if it, I usually, like I have a peacock sitting right here. I have feathers everywhere in my house. And I love the colors. But what I find really cool about peacocks is what they're able to do and how they achieve those brilliant, gorgeous feathers, the colors in them. You know, they're able to eat poisonous snakes without getting affected by the poison. You know, like I always told my husband, I was like, we need to, we need to get peacocks, okay, so that if they're snakes, it will take care of it, right? <laughs> they do, then they, they do, they're able to eat poisonous snakes, but the poison does not affect them, right? They are a perfect like as i'm talking about it's like the peacock feathers are like wide up it's like she's standing and like looking at you and she's gonna mentor you this week beautiful empath right what it means to be an empath right being a transmuter of energy it's not to take it in and let it harm you right you're very here's the thing it's like our energy system around us is transmuting so it doesn't even have to come into your body, right? It does not even have to come into your body and sit in your body for, for you to work your magic. By, it, by the emotion touching your energy field, it can get transmuted like that and sent back to the person. It does not even need to come to your body. Again, this is, a, I'm going to do this. I'm going to teach this class. <laughs> if you're interested, make sure you send me a message or comment below so I can put you on the waiting list and let you know when it's available. I'm going to write this down right now. Empath Toolkit. Okay. 
right? So work with the peacock. It, it takes the poison, it, it transmutes it to create those beautiful colors in the feathers. So it transmutes this, this negative, harsh energy into beauty. It transmutes this dense, you know, harsh, harmful poison into beauty. There's a lesson in there, my dear. So if you are an empath or if you receive this card, you're going to be working with a peacock too. Not just for this week. She stepped up to work with you. Perhaps she's been showing her, herself to you for a long time, but maybe you didn't understand the connection there. And now you do. Open up to her mentorship. I love my peacock. Like seriously, but the moment what, once I heard that part of the story, I was like, oh my gosh, it makes a lot of sense why I love the freaking peacock, right? <laughs> well, I've always wanted one. I'm, I'm going to get one. I'm telling you, not just one. I'm going to get like a whole bunch of them someday. White ones, and all the different colors. Like I just love them and they're so powerful, right? My husband was like, they're not friendly, you know? <laughs> I was like, that's okay. They can be wild. <laughs> they can do their thin and just be themselves. And I'm just going to enjoy your company from afar. <laughs> right? So you're being mentored by the beautiful, gorgeous, elegant peacock. And the peacock also comes with, um, I'm getting like a goddess that is coming with her. It's like a peacock goddess. So I'm going to let you receive that, whatever that is. But it's a whole team of peacocks and the peacock goddess coming to you to mentor you on what it means to have this superpower called empathic, empathic power, right? High five. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. So now let's move to the last one. Oh, I could have talked. I could, I could have talked like a whole thing on this. This is a very deep card. So if you received three, here's your card. Another beautiful card. Look at all the roses and the crystals. And this card says deep inward journey. You will be rewarded for the work. Yes, yes, yes. Deep inward journey. You will be rewarded for the work. Here's the message. One of our fundamental needs as human beings is to be deeply heard, acknowledged, and understood. This is another one of my cards. Actually, to be honest, all three of them are my cards. They, they all flow beautifully. They're all hidden, such as, you know, sections of what I need. So I'm receiving all of them. Oh, did you see my peacock right here? Like the energy is just like, <laughs> is your peacock like behind you? Seriously, like, I love it. And if you look at the peacock, see, we're going back there. If you look at the peacock feather, um, that, you know, it looks like eyes in the feather, right? And it reminds me of the eye um, that wards off evil, right? And in this case, like the eye that wards off anything that is not for your highest good, any negative energies, anything that's not for you. Okay, let's go back to card number three. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. One of our fundamental, fundamental needs as a human being is to be deeply heard, acknowledged, and understood. But so many of us look outside of ourselves to fulfill this need. We chase and climb until we realize that no quick fixes can heal what must be nurtured on the inside. You've drawn, you've received this card as a notice that your inner world needs tending to right now. I feel like all the cards have been hinting on this. So this week, I'm really getting it. I feel like this came in last week too. We're still tending to our roots. This might be the whole January, actually. We're still tending to our roots. So go back to that your, yourself as the tree and send that beautiful light to that golden light to the roots and fortify it. Give it the, you know, pull the nutrients from the divine mother to the roots, just create more branches down there, right? Oh, beautiful. Okay. The only way to truly understand your magnificence is by going on an inward journey. You will always be rewarded for this deep healing. On the other side of the work is pure self-compassion, joy, love, forgiveness, and ultimate 
ultimate inner peace. Your inner self consists of your hidden feelings, memories, thoughts, beliefs, prejudices, prejudices, <laughs> wounds, perspectives, shadows, and all mental emotional conditions that influence your ability to transform and feel your complete wholeness at the core level. When you do the inner work, you move past fears, addictions, limitations, depressions, loneliness, and low vibration feelings of unworthiness. Although inner work is often the hardest thing you will experience, it reaps tremendous rewards like a true alchemist, which that's what the empath is. The empath is a true alchemist. Do you see how it's all connected? <laughs> you are craving. Okay, like a true alchemist, you are carving out a brave new path for your growth. Your future is paved with new expansive beginnings as you heal your past. Here's your divine assignment. When you do the inner work, you are shining the light of awareness onto the landscape of the mind, the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious realms. You are in a period of learning. As you dive deeper into the next phase of your journey, you will see the aspects of yourself that needs to be understood and healed. Healing doesn't happen overnight. Recognize that this process is never over. It's true. The path of the spiritual seeker is ever unfolding forevermore. This is the journey of your soul that carries over into lifetimes. So release the need to have it all figured out and just dive into life like a curious child full of excitement and wonder. When you commit to your inner work, you are turning your pain into power and positively influencing others. Because when you heal yourself, you heal, you help heal the world. Soul work involves shining a light inward to integrate repressed aspects of your being. Stay strong and steady on this course. A renewed sense of peace and vitality will follow this phase of your life. This message is so powerful that it's even more message so here additional meaning the rose court is the crystal of self-love which can be called upon in times of great inner work and healing the rose court is responsible for the heart chakra connecting you to infinite wisdom and soul growth it purifies and opens the heart at all levels to promote love self-love friendship deep inner healing and feelings of peace it is important to be compassionate with yourself and remove all judgment at this sacred time. So if you receive this card, your working, your ally is um, the Rose Court, where if you receive card number two, your ally is the Peacock tribe and the goddess, of the Peacock goddess as well. So here's your question for this week to contemplate on. What burdens and pain from my past need to be looked at and healed? How can I alchemize my fear? And how can I use my voice to speak my truth into action? Go ahead and taking a deep breath in here. And out. Just move your body. Wherever you feel in tension, wherever you feel in tightness, just move, bring some movement into it. And know that your divine team, like send light through your breath to this space, to this part of your body, to your muscle, to the organ. <sighs> Whatever support you need, the divine team is on it. I want you to trust the soul messages that come to you this week and follow through with it so for example if you're being called to go by yourself you know um what i was about to say turkey feather <laughs> i wonder turkey medicine is also powerful too right but peacock feather go do that 
right? If you need to get it as a necklace, do that. If you need to get yourself a rose score, go get that, right? As I was reading the last card, especially the part with the rose score, it reminded me of my own experience with the rose score. Um, my first stone ever was the turquoise. The second one was the rose score. And my teacher at that time, she made her own beautiful, beautiful jewelries. Um, and they were intention, um, like, she created it uniquely for each client, right? And so for mine, it was like a huge chunk of rose core. It was gorgeous. Like it just pulled me in, right? And, you know, when I saw it just drew, like it pulled me in. So I, I got it and I wore it for a long time. I still have the pieces with me because eventually it broke. But anyways, I got my, it was like a full necklace, right? The, in the, at the end of it, it was a huge chunk of beautiful polished rose cord. I mean, it was powerful. And then around it, it had rhodochrosite, it had um, hematite, it had ro more rose cord. Like it was, it was a, a necklace for royalty. And so I got it, I took it home, you know, I wore it all day that day. I took it home next day, I tried to put it on and the necklace fell um, and the rose court cracked. And I was like, oh no. So next time I saw my teacher, I was like, oh my gosh, like I destroyed it. It was so beautiful. And she just laughed and I was like, why is it funny? I destroyed it. And she's like, no, 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 that's how it works, right? The rose court, you know, the moment I wore it, it just took on all the the emotional stuff I was that needed to be transmuted. And when it hit the ground and cracked, and that's the thing, it didn't break. Up to now, there's a crack in there, right? It didn't break, it just cracked. And when it cracked, it released the energy to the mother earth. Beautiful crystals, like they, that's how they work. When you first get a crystal, usually what happens is like it will kick up the things that need to be healed because it's processing through then helping you heal that. And then once the path is cleared, then the blessing or the gifts of that stone can come out, right? The other part is that I remember um, a friend, a friend of mine was going through heartache, right? Like she had just um, broken up with her partner at this at that time. And, you know, she asked me, is there anything that can support me? And I was like, rose court. <laughs> so I got her like a chunk of rose court. And it was like days later, she's like, I don't know what's happening. I'm crying all this time. I can't stop crying. I was like, yeah, it's the rose court <laughs> is doing this work. You're clearing, you're clearing and you're healing and you're opening your heart. Um, and it was just such a beautiful process for her. Like she kept, it was very intense for her because she, there's a lot of emotional processing that was going on, but she was very much doing that in love. Remember rose court is like pure love. Right? So she was cocooned in that beautiful love as she was processing all of that and feeling safe and secure doing that. Right. It's just such a beautiful way. We have beautiful allies that are around us to support us. You know, the animal allies, we have the crystal allies, we have the angels, archangels, we have a higher selves, like goddesses, ascended masters of light. Like seriously, we didn't come here on this planet to be alone or to do this by ourselves. We are very much cared for, right? But it is up to you to recognize all the support that you have and to also say yes to them. So are you willing to say yes to your support? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, my loves. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What a me what beautiful messages this week. Let me know how it resonated with you. Which one stood out to you? Or did you also feel called to all three of them? Right? Are you going to be stepping? You know, working with the the peacock or the rose cord? What questions do you have about crystal crystals? You know, one of the things that I do in my Goddess Only program, which if you would like to join, you can still join. We're going to be starting this week. It is time. <laughs> And one of the things that I do is that I help them to receive the crystal ally for the year. This is something I've been doing for years where I call in a crystal ally. If you notice last year, all last year I was wearing like a citrine necklace. The year before I was wearing Labradorite. And this year, um, what is this stone called? I keep trying to say aventurine, but it's not aventurine. 
aquamarine there we go aquamarine came in very strongly so this is the first time that i'm working with um aquamarine and i'm really excited to see um what deliciousness especially looking at my year how is is very steep just a like year two is very steeped in that emotional realm um so i'm really excited to have the support and also to see how i'm gonna blossom this year with this support right we have so many allies so if you'd like to learn more about this just send me a message and i invite you to come join goddess unleash it is a powerful powerful program um and i love i love what i do i love teaching what i i i know right and continue to learn i have is something I've done <laughs> and I know it works, right? And I love teaching that. So let me know any questions you have, but have a fabulous week. And until next time, from my heart to yours. Bye.